Welcome to Electro Online. It turns out that protostars are also classified according to the kind of radiation that they emit. And obviously as they get warmer and warmer, they begin to radiate radiation at higher and higher frequencies and shorter and shorter wavelengths. So let's take a look. There are four classes starting with class zero. Class zero is where we have just the buildup of heat at the center as the density is increasing, as the heat is being built up because of the pressure, and the, sol the mass that starts to turn into a protostar puts out uh, radiation at the microwave or what we call sub-millimeter wavelength uh, rate. So it's basically the kind of radiation you'd expect to get from a microwave. Can't see it, it's not visible yet. Then when we get into the stage where the, the size of the, uh, of the molecular cloud is it collapses into something the size of a solar system, it reaches what we call class one, and now it's beginning to radiate in what we call the far infrared. So not really the high infrared, but somewhere between microwave and the normal infrared. The next stage it reaches class two, and at that point we have definitely a very visible protostar at the center, reaching temperatures at the surface of several thousands of degrees, and so it's beginning to radiate in the regular infrared radiation. And then finally, it reaches class three, where we have a legitimate protostar, temperature at the center about one million degrees, slowly building up to a temperature of 10 million degrees at the core, and it begins to be so hot at the surface that we're Someone just came in. All right. So it begins to be so hot at the surface of several thousand degrees at the surface that it begins to show visible light radiation, first in the red, and then slowly as the temperature increases, it goes from red into the orangey color. It doesn't quite reach the yellow color because the surface temperature never reaches a high enough temperature in the protostar to become as yellow as the sun. So basically we get a reddish glow to a reddish orange glow from a protostar with temperatures of several thousand degrees at the surface, giving us the visible light, calling it the class three type of protostar. So you can see it's also classified in the various stages. You can also see how much time it spends at the various stages, giving off that kind of radiation. Notice that initially, the, the time that it takes to go to the next stage is, is, uh, is very quickly, and then slowly but surely it gets into the stage where it takes about 10 million years to turn from an, a beginning of the protostar into a legitimate star. And so that's how we classify the protostars according to their radiation. So those visible? The class zero, one, two, or three? No. We only get Far infrared and infrared is not visible, and then the visible light is when it, you can actually see the disk. And how do you know what it is? And how do they classify it's not visible? Because we can take pictures of it in the infrared. What about the thing you're showing on the easel? You want to know about the pictures? Oh, well, I want to know about the pictures. <laughs> Tell me all about the pictures. Well, you should recognize this yeah, one right now. Eagle. That's the Eagle Nebula. And you can see there's some extensions on the Eagle Nebula where star formation is taking place, and those go to the various stages and the various classes where you get the different kinds of radiation. So simply from its shape, you can tell that there's a star emerging there, and then you can see what stage it's in by the kind of radiation you get from it. This is a, a close-up picture of the same thing, and you can see the various stages where stars are beginning to form. The red one is a different nebula. I don't know the name of that nebula, but you can see also these finger-like structures where at the end you probably have the formation of a star. Again, you can tell by using an infrared uh, a telescope to see if there's indeed radiation coming from that place. So if you have no infrared telescope, you're out of luck. You see nothing. Well, you see the stars behind it. <laughs> you see that. <laughs> you don't see the radiation coming from it. All right.